Hey gang, so I saw this question on this Feltkit repo of someone having issues setting up Netlify forms with Feltkit. I used to work in Netlify and I have the knowledge to make this work. People really struggle with this because Netlify setup is a little bit, it's not really designed for, uh, for modern web apps uh, with JavaScript rendering. So um, I know how to do this. I figured it out and I've run the test and I figured I should record my knowledge so that anyone running into this can understand what they're doing with Netlify Forms. Uh, it's actually pretty easy. You just need to know how it works under the hood. And how Netlify Forms work under the hood is that they scan your HTML for something like something like a form with a Netlify field and it, then it sets up the Netlify Forms. So uh, over here, I have an example of this down here. Uh, this is an example. This is how it looks to have a form set up. It has an active form and the build deploy uh, at the end says like it detects a form field. That's what it looks like. A lot of people don't get to this stage because when they're rendering their um, JavaScript app, they actually don't have an HTML file with the forms involved. Um, so it needs a bit of work, and uh, especially with Svelkit, it needs two bits of work, which is why I'm here to uh, offer some advice because I just did it and it wasn't exactly smooth. <laughs> so I just wanted to record this to make it easy for people. Okay, so let's get this started. Uh, I have a basic uh, Svelkit initiation app. Um, I've just installed the dependencies and I've set up Git. Uh, that's, that's about it. Oh, I should probably also set up the uh, the repo because I want to do some uh, CI/CD later on. Okay, uh, that's fine. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into source app.html. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to add a detection helper, right? Which is just BS for like, okay, uh, we know that this is gonna dynamically render. Uh, so we can actually add uh, this hidden field so that um, your um, your form helper can actually see it. Uh, this isn't strictly needed if you statically render this, but let's just go ahead and, and add this. Okay. The second thing is we're going to add in this felt form component. So let's go into the, the main page, source routes, and then We'll, uh, we'll do this. So I'm going to intentionally do something that doesn't work, and I'll show you why um, why it doesn't work. <laughs> okay. The last bit that you have to do is to install the uh, uh, see this this one is the is the one that people trip over. Ensure Netlify's form processing is enabled. Uh, it is not enabled when I just simply do this, um, and that's because if you don't understand what you're doing, you uh, you often get this issue. Okay. So. Let me get branch readme. Okay, there we go. All right, so let's install these the Netlify adapter. Do, 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 do. And let's configure it. I already wrote this previously, but you could just copy out the code from the docs. Uh, here's the docs, by the way. Uh, I made a PR to explain the docs a little bit more, but you should be able to see what I'm doing here. Okay, the final step is to have a Netlify <coughs> dot toml together with these figures. Uh, config, whatever. Uh, so this will still not work, but I want to show you why. Um, Okay, and the next thing is, let's, uh, let's go ahead and set up that site. All right, this should take a while to deploy. Um, should be pretty fast and um, the main thing I want to show you is that even though we have the form here uh, it's not going to be able to detect it and uh, yeah that's the that's the challenge with this thing okay all right build 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 looks good looks good looks good 
and there's no form detected. So if you look here, it doesn't recognize any forms. It just, that's the default page. It's empty. And if you go to the app, um, you see the form here, but when we do the submission, it says error not found success. Okay. So one of the one of the issues here is that it's it's got a form action success and this is um, a typical HTML attribute that redirects after a successful post. Uh, we don't actually have a success page. We could do, we could add in a success dot svelte if we wanted to, um, but actually we just don't need to. We can just do this, um, and that's fine. Uh, all right. So what happened with the form not being detected? Uh, it's because I want to show you if we run build. Here's me running build locally, right? Uh, and then we look at the build folder. The build folder only has JavaScript. It doesn't have any HTML. So all this is dynamically rendered uh, inside of a serverless function. So what you really need to do is you need to pre-render things. Um, so it took me a little bit of time to figure this out. So hopefully this will save you some time. If you go to the, actually, I think I could just If you go to the docs, you can figure this out. But here, I'm just going to paste in whatever I did had before, and this enables some crawling for for pre-renders. Um, but this will not do it as well. So if you run the build again, uh, it should theoretically pre-render, but you can see that nothing changed. Um, everything's exactly the same. There's no HTML being rendered. Um, so the other thing that you have to do is you have to go to your the the page that you want to pre-render, and you got to mark it for pre-render. Mm, there we go. You need to say script context module export cons pre render equals true on that page that you want to pre render. Um, and uh, this is a, a quirk, I guess, of um, this file kit. Uh, and you can find it in the docs, so, so don't worry about you know all this stuff. Uh, okay, so now I run the build again, and now you see a little bit difference when I run index.html. I see the form and I see the, the honeypot, uh, sorry, the, the hidden field. Um, we probably don't need the hidden field anymore. So let's go ahead and delete that. Because this is a, this is what you do if you render client side. But here we're rendering server side. In fact, we're pre-rendering server side. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and say no to this. Boy, tell me how to say no to this. Okay. Um, and then I'll stick all those attributes. Um, you need this to, to tell Netlify that, like, um, this is the, the the form field. Okay, um, so now I'm gonna pre-render. Uh, I think it should render correctly. Let's check the index.html. Yep. So that's one single form, and that's it. Okay. So now let's uh, um, add form, and let's wait for the CI/CD to kick off. Um, I do this because you could actually manually deploy it. Um, I do this because this is more likely the realistic workflow that you're going to use to help with what I do. Um, if you want it to be a bit faster in your iterations, you can manually locally build, check it, and then uh, push the files out to Netlify instead of running your CI CD on Netlify, um, which I will do in, in some scenarios. Okay, so here's the first successful form build, right? Uh, and then there's the form that's, that's uh, active. Okay, so now let's go ahead and reload this. And let's see what it looks like when I have a uh, submission. Test, potato, uh, submit. Thank you, your form submission has been received. I'll go ahead and refresh. Uh, and that's my first submission. All right, I think uh, that should serve as a good enough demo. Um, all the best.